not wanting to like you know uh to, you know to um uh to say any show any of the shows is less interesting than the others but i'll start with the the ones where like i guess in the order where like you know the, which ones we're getting more and more excited for so should we start with um rangers in the republic hell yeah because we don't really know anything about this one but mm. It, it sounds it sounds interesting. Like um, I'm assuming this is gonna be like all the stuff they set up with Dave Filoni's character and his what's his name the um the X-wing pilot uh, Carson. Carson. Carson yeah and Carson. like Carpool. them recruiting um Kara and like all sort of stuff he said about like what's going on in the outer rim. There's things that they're not telling the New Republic and that sort of thing. Yeah. Because they specifically said that these are gonna be um two new sh- two shows. We'll get to the second one in a bit that are crossing over with. The timeline of the Mandalorian and like the same sort of era, same sort of time, right after uh, Return of Jedi. So, I guess we're gonna see like more of like the bureaucracy of the New Republic and why Leia moved away from that and moved towards the Resistance, as we see in the Force. Awakens. I'm wondering if this is, could be what the uh, the rumored like Cara Dune series could be. It could just be that she'll mm. be like a main character in this. Um, that was one of the first things I thought when when um, seeing the announcement so we'll see i definitely think that like the whole life set up the thing that she's now like joined up with the new republic and yeah. that sort of thing i think that's probably where she'll come into this as a major character probably ahsoka yes, yes. Like, i i wasn't sure you'd actually get a live action ahsoka series but uh yeah here we go yeah because so many people were saying and i was like no i feel like it's gonna be animation kind of like this yeah. stick with the whole rebels vibe but no yeah. Which is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy about it too. Yeah, I, so. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Rosario is back. Yeah. Um presumably I assume Dave Filoni will probably be a writer on it. Um oh, definitely, he definitely. Would, he, definitely. He, he wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, and we're gonna yeah, hopefully learn more about Fraun and Ezra and Sabine and yeah. I assume we're gonna see Lars Mickelson in live action. So this is also something else because I mean we talked about it when it happened. Um Rahul I think his name is Coley. Hmm, yeah. um, and he was talking about being Ezra and Disney shut that shit right down. Yeah. Right. So he's been continually like teasing people. He's the fact teasing. That he's... So I think he might have done it by accident and Disney were like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like yeah. this show isn't even announced. Like he might have actually like sort of come out and said, no, I'm just joking with all of this. I'm mm-hmm. trying to remember what like the actual details were. But like I think it was something like, something like is sort of. It's more just like a sort of popular fan cast. He's sort of fan casting himself. Yeah. Once again, Rosario started out as a popular fan cast. Yes, Same that is Sebastian. true. We'll see how that goes. But, we'll see how um, that goes. Yeah. Fingers crossed. But, fingers crossed um, for Sebastian. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I I think my understanding of it is he isn't he isn't a live action Ezra in any official capacity, but at the very least he's just a popular fan cast at the moment. Yeah. That mm. being said some others were as well and are now that is true character in live action that is true yeah uh, vin diesel was a popular fan cast as Groot when over four guardians of the galaxy i know that's like yeah it was the thing that he basically they announced guardians of the galaxy he said i'm playing Groot in it and then everyone was like oh my god you're playing Groot!" and then eventually james gunn just had to come along and just go all right well i guess we're casting him as Groot then and it's like it's <laughs> like he's basically told everybody that he's playing him and like i mean yeah, all right, cool. I'll buy that. And then he's just sure, sure enough. It's like, yeah. yeah, this kind of thing does work every now and then. Yeah. But yeah. I'm also um, just going to throw up in the group chat real quick that uh, with this morning's news, uh, Raul did this this morning. He throws this up on screen. He rebranded his Twitter page as a Hayden Christensen, Hayden Christensen stan yes. account. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the header got updated. That's so funny. <laughs> So I'm glad that he's joining us all in the hype. Yes, he stands as much as much as much as I want to talk about all that right now. We're gonna have to set up separate. We're doing that in a separate video, so that's coming out. That's Um, either coming out tomorrow, like later. Like if we're gonna film it today, it's gonna come out later tonight or on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. more details will come out on that on Twitter. But anyway, continue. Um, yeah, but I feel like we're gonna this all this will be the the Ezra and Thrawn and Sabine Ahsoka story here and yeah, um. I really do hope we see uh, Lars Mikkelsen in live action as Thrawn because same so. as Katie Sackhoff, um, you're like we've had two like your anime series characters brought into live action. One's been voiced, one, one's been played by the voice actor, one's been played by a different actor. Mm. And, but I think that Lars just will just work as as Thrawn. I'm also gonna put in the group chat like so it's... you can throw it up on the screen. Sorry, shameless plug, but else yeah. I did I did I do a photo edit of just 
making him mm. blue and <laughs> make him look like Thrawn. It's yeah. just like I think with with prosthetics and stuff, you could make him look more like Thrawn. I mean, the fact shape. that they pulled off the Soko, they could yeah, do anything yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> As long so as they good like, makeup artist good. Yeah, I just I really wanna since I like I knew Lars Mikkelsen as an actor from Sherlock. Originally he's the like the main villain in the season final of season three, isn't it? Yeah. Um yeah. and he's chilling in that performance and just like fantastic performance and then like found out he is playing voicing Thrawn and Rebels, like yep, yeah, perfect choice. And it's just his voice. Is everyone like sort of agreeing when talking about who could play um Thrawn? It's like some sort of choice like of Benedict Cumberbatch actually is one of them, and Michael Fassbender. It's like they certainly could play Robert Zemeckis. It's just his voice, and specifically his accent, just sounds alien and odd. And his way of speaking that he does for Thrawn, where it's a very slow, like you can tell he's, it's not his first. Yeah. He voices it like you can tell it's not his first language, and he's thinking, he's translating it in his head as he's speaking, and it gives this really sort of slow way to his way he talks as he's sort of thinking about each word, yeah. and that sort of thing. Those little levels of the performance just. I, I watched something the. As, that's something as well that's that okay. like, La, La, Lars wouldn't do. It's like being Danish. He was like he was bi mm. bilingual in Danish and English, and so mm. and so. It's something that like that's actually like a performance element of like putting yeah. on for Thrawn. But then at the same time, but just like keeping his natural accent and like just exaggerating all these little like little tweaks and flourishes yeah. that he adds to his accent that just make it sound when he's saying certain words and certain words that like only exist in the Star Wars universe as well. He just adds all these little additional flares of like making it mm. sound like alien to him and so on it's just like he's yeah. such a yeah he's brilliant in the performance i like it yeah. what they've kind of set up with like these three different shows of mando rangers and ahsoka that we've mm. got we've got the underworld the republic and the jedi oh yeah. yes perfect and then, the, and then the imperial remnant is like an ever-present shadow through all three of them mm. really. yes and, well the imperial remnant slash the sith as well because we've got that like the, the sith eternal and the first order on the rise yeah. in the background to all of this so that's interesting like getting to like in the same way that with mando we get to explore like the like sort of like the just the underground and like just mm. like bounty hunters and criminals and like just like all the sort of like just average people in the galaxy going around yeah at yeah. the same time, we'll get to explore a little bit more of, like, the more spiritual and, like, mystical side of the world of the universe with the Ahsoka show. And then in Rangers, we'll get to explore a little more of, like, the inner workings of the Republic and, like, mm. what sort of civilian life and, like, military life is like here at the moment. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm and really interested. And I also think it's kind of like that that theme where we've spoken of the fact that you know it's kind of like filling in the gap that the empire just didn't disappear suddenly for yeah. 30 years so it's obviously again like you said alex that shadow of the empire is still there but they're not only showing it in mando they're showing it in three different like contexts so i think mm. that's going to be interesting to see it across all three shows and then be like oh this is why it was so bad in the in the, the trilogy so yeah it's going to be yeah. interesting how it all accumulates so for the next one speaking about the sith and the dark side i said we go to acolyte Yes. Ooh, which yes. Is, it's about uh it's set in the High Republic. First yes. it's gonna be his first series set mm. in the High, High Republic era. And it's gonna be about like this growing dark side towards the end of the High Republic. And the High Republic, once it comes to an end, will be then the old Republic, not the old Republic as is in Legends, but the old Republic as we see it in Phantom Menace when Palpatine's around and Maul's around, and that's just before the Clone Wars. I'm not sure how long that period is between uh, the High Republic ending and fa and the Clone Wars beginning in that Old Republic era, but it's going to be that sort of time. It could potentially. Um, well, when's when's the High Republic set? Then? Is it five hundred years? years. It's two hundred years before the Phantom Menace. Is the thing. Two hundred. I could totally see Darth Plagueis turning up in the series. Yeah. Like yeah. maybe right right at the end. If it's have we ever seen him before? No. Uh, in in Legends, he was a a, yeah. a mune. A it's the the banking clan. Uh, race have like the really long tall heads oh yeah he's one of them in legends mm -hmm. we don't have his portrayal because darth bane's look has changed from legends to canon so we don't yeah. know what he looks like in canon yeah. I but um be f I, I don't because like his um his particular species doesn't really have anything to do with his yeah. characterization and so i know i always thought he seems like such a legendary figure but he's just like oh he's one of just one, one of those random like skinny dudes that's like <laughs> yeah. in, in attack of the clones so i thought mm -hmm. i would have I would be fine if like they reinvent him in any particular way that sort of like lets him be like a little more of a yeah maybe give him like some sort of like features that are a bit different or something. yeah that'd be cool um but one thing i thought of mitch about the yes. acolyte, i thought huh acolyte like the acolytes of beyond 
I was yeah. exactly what I thought when I first yeah. heard it, and I, I didn't know what the series was about. I just saw Acolyte, and I saw Hyrule, like, okay, it's Bagfoot. But, yeah. maybe it's this series... About, it's like, because uh, there's lots of people saying, uh, like, talking about it as a Sith show, and I thought, well, mm. more specifically, what if it's about, like, the disciples of exactly. the Sith and the Dark Side? People aren't outwardly force wielders themselves, mm. but follow the teachings of the Sith and explore... I... Yeah. And what if this is a story about the origins of the Acolytes? I could totally buy that, and I would hope that the direction this is going is it's going to set up the Acolytes to then have the Mandal become Snoke, who is one of them, be in next season of Mando. Yeah. yeah. And this will, this, Maybe, will, you know. this will set up the Acolytes so you'll know who they are. So then in next series of Mando, when you see one of them who will become Snoke, played by Andy Serkis, hopefully, that's I'm hoping that's where, where we're going to have them set up because hopefully. of that. But even so, like, even... The way that you guys spoke about the acolytes of mm. um, the Sith yeah. of the Beyond, because um, I don't know much about them, so I forgot yeah. the name. Um, but Nobody like, even knows just, anything about if them. If they really. touch about like the Darth Vader stuff that you guys spoke about with the whole like you know get him them excuse me them getting the lightsaber that belonged mm. to Darth Vader. So if they ever touch upon that, that'll be interesting too, because that gives them the opportunity to do that too. Because hmm. all we really know about them so far is, like, there's a couple of footnotes in the prose of one novel and then, a, like, a blurb in one of the visual dictionaries. That's really all there is to know about Damn. them. And yeah. so, but what we do know is that there's the Sith Eternal on Exegol who've, like, it's kind of set up. They've yeah. been around for, like, ages. They've been around, like, the whole time the Sith have been around. The Sith Eternal have been there on Exegol. Like, just like, as, like, some, this cult that, like, always they can go back to and, like, just, like, do stuff there. Mm -hmm. But the Acolytes, there's no real reason to suggest that they're not a more recent thing. Recent in the mm. term of, like, 200 years of the galaxy's yeah. history. Yeah. But then, um, but they're, like, they're, like, field agents out in the galaxy and so on. Mm. So, it's kind of, like, they could, they, they could go that angle of, like, there's something that's, like, kind of new in that, because it's something they say in um, The Phantom Menace that the Sith haven't been around since the fall of the Old Republic, which was a thousand years before The Phantom Menace, if I remember right. And mm. so no one's seen a Sith Lord in a thousand years, but there's no reason to say that the dark side wasn't around that time and there weren't yeah. acolytes mm. who followed it. If these guys are all hanging around around the end of the High Republic era and then also leading into the return of the Sith in the form of Plagueis and Palpatine a few um, hundred years down the track, it's like, yeah. that could be an interesting story but, to pursue. Because like, it always sort of struck me like we have no idea how old palpatine is like yeah. in in phantom menace when the earliest we've seen him in the canon timeline he's like what ian's age was at the time he was like late 50s early 60s there i think phantom menace yeah. and like that's like sort of age palpatine sort of portrayed as being i guess yeah. and then by return of the jedi he's what like 30 it's 30 years later he's like in his 90s now yeah, probably. Um, yeah, he old. <laughs> yeah, and so it's like, but then I wonder, like, is he actually, he, like, is he, he, like, you know, dark side is pathway to many abilities, some consider to be unnatural. Is he actually, like, 60 years old in a Phantom Menace, or is he, like, could he be, like, 100 years old by that point, and he's just used dark side stuff to keep himself alive? Because mm. um, it does seem like he has a lot of knowledge, even if, if he's only... Is this the one, there's the one, like... Mm. I forget where I read this, but it was someone saying the thing of like when he gets electrocuted by his lightning reflecting back from attacking Mace in Revenge of the Sith. There was the way that I think it might have even been like just like when Revenge of the Sith released as a way that mm. lots of people have like read that scene as like this is like this is the facade falling down is what happens there. Mm. Is this is like his whatever Sith sorcery is done to like have this appearance of like this kindly old senator is then that's mm. then just falling breaks. away. To yeah. realize that he's actually like you know he's this like sort of mutated yeah. you know mm. horrific creature essentially yeah because that's what i'm thinking if higher if this is the acolytes which is gonna be taught that if they're following the dark side and there's gonna be stuff like sif there has to be a sif they're following right and if this is 200 years before phantom menace and palpatine could be like 100 years old in the phantom menace then plagueis is probably around because plagueis has to train him and then he has to kill him and then he has to become the one sif lord so plagueis needs to be you know over 100 years old by the time he's training Palpatine. So, yeah, I feel pretty confident in the fact that if it's going to see a Sith Lord in the Acolyte series, it'll be we'll see Plagueis mm. and sort of have him set up, and then he's going to go on to train Palpatine. That I, I'm really, really excited about the Cassian Andor show. I've seen like it's one that sort of 
from like because I mean it's been known about for quite a while. Nope, so it has like, a name, Andor. Andor, yes. It has a Andor. name, just just Andor. Uh, so, um, lots of people have like, it's that's one of the ones that was like the second ever series to mm. be announced after Mando, and so people have known about that for a while. There's a lot of people that sort of of the mindset of like, oh, why do we why do we have this? What's the point of this? Like, is this like a, this really just like random side mm. character that's only in one thing, but then there's like a wealth of really interesting lore that they can explore in the show because um for one thing also it's just like awesome that we've got diego luna and alan yeah. Riddick returning as um uh, cashin k2 but there's also the fact that uh cashin's um early childhood is going to be explored in the film his childhood on as we know from i believe just like some of it some of the, the dialogue he alludes to of like stuff he alludes to in the film also what we then know from some of the visual dictionaries that uh he was born and raised on a separatist world during the mm. Clone Wars. him and his family were allies of the separatists during the war and their planet was invaded forcibly by the clone troopers and so he just sees the clones and the republic and the empire they've just been the bad guys the whole time for him and um uh i believe cassian's sister is going to play a major role in the show she's played by uh adria arjona I'm pronouncing her name right she's, she's amazing she's in um uh, i know her from good omens but she's in a bunch of other mm -hmm. films and tv shows recently but yeah she's brilliant i'm really looking forward to seeing her in the role got uh genevieve o'reilly returning as mon mothma she's great as well and stellan skarsgård is going to be in the show too mm. somewhere he's so, an amazing actor yeah, i know so yeah i'm just like yeah, yeah i'm happy to see him yeah but this it's like i'm i'm really intrigued to see this kind of like um much more kind of like like, I mean, because there's, like, lots of people saying, like, is this going to be, like, more of a war story? Is it going to be more of a spy story? And I thought, I mean, it's probably going to be, like, Rogue One. It's going to be, like, a mix of yeah. the two. It's yeah. going to be mm -hmm. both. Because, like, he is a spy, but also this is wartime, and we're going to be exploring, like, seeing the Clone Wars from the Separatist side, from the side of the mm. civilians that just, like, found themselves exactly, caught up yeah. in all of the, caught up in the politics of the war. And, like, all right, you know, you're, you're, okay, here's a weapon, there's the clones, go and fight. Sort yeah. of thing. And I am really, really, really intrigued to see it what they do with this yeah what they do the story of it. yeah and also like it's one of the f um i mean like a bunch of them are going to be like this going ahead but this is one of the ones that's uh it's just a mini series no ongoing yeah. plan for this one's just going to be this single run of episodes tell this one story and that's it have this, they said like, how many episodes or is it just i think it's 12 it's 12 12? i think so. okay. 12, wow, wow, really I yeah yeah uh six. yeah the uh the little little Damn. sizzle reel behind the scenes thing uh i was gonna say uh it would kind of take the time a little bit but do you want like if, if you want to like react to that now we also watch oh, it at yeah, the same time so that you it. can yeah i haven't seen yeah, it. yeah I'll do I, it I watched it but uh we'll just sort of sync up our Wait. watch everything i did i did for the rebellion Rogue One, in many ways, it's a film that connected new audiences with the, the oldest fans. It was a bittersweet feeling, you know, on the premiere, knowing that it was just one film. But then magic happens, right? As you can see, we're getting ready. We're building stages, we're rehearsing, we're training, we're trying costumes, we're doing everything to make sure we do the best show. I'm really excited having the chance to explore Cassian. It's really fun to go on a set that is emulating something you like so much. The enormity of this is like doing a big feature film. It's very cinematic. For me, that's where the excitement is. 12 episodes, 12 scripts, over 200 named cast members, over 6,000 crowd people, a lot of creatures that come in from the creature department. We treat this exactly like we would have would have filmed. There is no difference in our approach. Every creature and droid that we've been building has the same care, level of attention to detail. It's the previous films. It's huge, it's thrilling, but also it's wonderfully challenging. There's tons of possibilities to explore. It is the building of a revolution. indeed All that right. was sick no. God, like but no that's shows. crazy like that's just no. showing like how much passion and how much yeah like disney is now trusting star wars because it's like oh yeah. okay this is what it's about yeah. we need yeah. to put actual like hardcore effort into these shows so that makes me happy and yeah. i'm excited i'm actually really excited because I, I told you guys i was worried about it but now i'm, mm. I'm fine i'm I, I i really like the look of that one in fact they seem like they're just really excited and they're really putting a lot of effort <laughs> Pardon me, a lot of effort into it and want to make it as be as good as possible. Mm, I really definitely. like that.
Yeah. I like that. I think the um, one thing as well that makes it kind of stand apart from a lot of the other ones, and I'd say maybe the uh, Obi Wan show, which we'll get to uh, mm. <laughs> in another video. Yeah, another, another video. Um, <laughs> well, um, is is kind of like this as well. Of like, it's one where um, there isn't like any extra effort that has to. There isn't any extra weight on it beyond beyond just it as yeah. a feature and as a presentation itself. Like, yeah. it's not. This is the Andor show that will set up this and this and this yeah. and this and this and it has to do all these different things instead of just no it just has to be a really good feature and it's like yeah exactly. i mean like rogue one wasn't like that rogue one was this is the one that's going to test can you do a star wars film that isn't a one of the main skywalker saga films. yeah and that Turns can stand can, alone by itself oh, fuck. yeah exactly and then even solo was like this is going to set up can this work as a series which mm. it kind of will lead into some stuff as we're going hopefully to see. yeah we'll, we'll see hopefully yeah. um but it's like this one is sort of like feels much more like it's just yeah we're just going to tell this story from mm. start to finish that's all we have to do we don't have to worry about anything more than that it's just this one team doing this one story yeah. and i think that's mm. going to be really interesting to see and i think it's yeah. good because yeah again like they said like it's just like it's focusing on one character and their story and what they go through and it's just like one part of the star wars universe and just like one series yeah so that's what i love it's just like it's expanding but at the same time it's like it's all just connected already because it's like from mm. other things that we've seen so i'm excited oh yeah i i'm, I'm looking for, I, the thing that just sold me on it even though like i know nothing about story details the thing just sold me on it's just how excited Dario looks for it yeah like, he it's is, just like yeah. when you see the excitement and the passion from the staff it's like yeah, okay i'm exactly. sold if there's and... passion behind it then it's gonna be good Neil Scanlon is an amazing creature, uh, like creature create, like, you just, you know, the creature yeah, designer yeah. and animatronics build a uh, creator and everything like that. And Michael Wilkinson is an amazing costume he's designer. He's the best costume designer. Oh, in the business. best. Yeah, yeah. He, he's like, he, yeah, yeah he's just, he's designed some amazing costumes and stuff. And I'm really excited that he's working on it because he's a very, he must, he's, he's he always just, this is first Star Wars projects. Yeah. yeah. He just like oozes passion for whatever he's working on. You can tell he's, he's excited about whatever he's working on. Yeah um but yeah no i'm i'm very excited for cash and i think we don't know much going forward but like and i'm not sure when it's set i'd assume it's, it's set uh it's it's set in a bunch of different times as I, oh yeah it's going as i understand forward. we got like cash in as like a little kid during the clone wars cash which is gonna be as, very interesting yeah mm. cash in as a teenager in maybe not exactly the same time as bad batch is set but like a little bit mm. after that probably around the same time as like the prologue for solo yeah. Um, and then we've got, I think the rest of it is set around about a year before Rogue One. Okay. Ooh, so like nice. concurrent okay. with, concurrent with, um, uh, Rebels season three, I'd say. Okay. So I guess like, it's like just snapshots of yeah. like what's happened to him and stuff mm. and how it's yeah. affected him. Like, and got him like to it, be who he was. Yeah. I reckon it'll be like, yeah, yeah the, they have the main plot line in the sort of the present of about a year before Rogue One, but then jumping mm. back and forth here and there. Yeah. As flashbacks we go along and stuff. Like, yeah. Which is... Which is gonna be cool because like that Venice shipyard is gonna be like maybe like five years after the Clone Wars when he's a kid and just like the old the old world, old systems being like torn down and yeah. Yeah, in favor of the Empire. And, yeah, we're gonna see like know? three different stages of the galaxy yeah. around him and like how yes. because we're really gonna get to see like that'll this be is, definitely like, yeah. interesting. Um, let's talk about visions. No. Yeah, I want to talk about. Uh, I was just yeah. saying, heads up. I'm gonna talk about visions, and I want to change pace and talk about the movies first, and then go back to Bad Batch because I'm most excited for Bad okay. Batch, yeah, and it's no, coming the most. Cool. Coming yeah. the most. It's coming the soonest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Let Let's go. To... Coming the soonest. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to uh, visions, which mm. the description here isn't as. Uh, it, it's still exciting, but it's not as, as exciting as what was said on uh, Twitter when I heard a description of it. Was literally that. Star Wars Visions that upcoming was a series of short films directed by some of the greatest Japanese anime directors in the world. It's like, that sounds amazing. That yeah. sounds awesome. That's that like, sounds that... really good. It sounds like... better than what they wrote here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anthology series are always really cool. I always love like the concept of them. Like just the idea of like, you just like, yeah, take a bunch of creators, give them a budget and say, all right, go make a mm. thing. And then we'll release it as a thing. Yeah, and it's like I remember. Yeah, when I started watching Love, Death, and Robots, I thought, how come this isn't like, this is like it's sort of like it was an event series sort of thing. I thought, how come this isn't something like every six months we get like a season of something? I'm like, okay, there's like yeah. just all of these different indie filmmakers and animators from like all over the world, like making all these different like you know this like that's because that's yeah. perfect. Like, is that kind of what Black Mirror is like? Uh, well, so, sort of. Sort it's of. All fr it's from oh, the yeah. same. 
it's from like um it's just the same showrunners and the same people mm. doing it as mm. like some of the same cast like okay but it's like no. basically it's like all set in the same universe and like mm. you know but like different stories each sort of time yeah um, okay but yeah um i'm really interested to see because like i i mean i only know like the there's only like a bare minimum of anime shows i've seen mm. and they're like only the most like sort of vanilla ones you'd expect like attack on titan <laughs> and full metal alchemist that i've really seen but even then it's like i am really intrigued to see like i just like I, like i mean i suppose i'll get to experience it as like sort of like the ultimate form of what it what it is it's like okay let's just see like okay so who's this person they're doing this story all right let's just see something brand new let's yeah. see something completely mm. unlike anything that's come before it in star wars and like also i saw like some people there was someone on um Lots of people are like getting hyped about it on Star Wars leaks, and then someone just came along and said, "Actually, a lot of the there's lots of people saying like it's like there's going to be a 2D animated series mostly. It's going to be mostly 2D animated. Just think about that. We haven't really seen anything like that in Star Wars." Mm -hmm. And then someone just came along and said something like, "I mean, most anime shows are more like they use 3D now, and so it's so yeah. Don't think of it as a 2D animated thing. It's going to be all 3D." And then I said, "All right, I, it's like, yeah, okay, that's true. Some of them are doing 3D. Some of them mm -hmm. here and there." And mostly like all the like the netflix original studios and like rooster teeth and so on do that yeah but like i said like i mean like come on most of i think i 2D. think come they on. might go with 2d it's a little yeah. bit more expensive mm, yeah. because like obviously not many studios do do yeah. 2d as much they're all kind of moving to 3d now but yeah. i ho i hope they do 2d because i think it would yeah. match it more mm. than 3d because yeah. yeah for short films as well it's like yeah yeah the, the yeah. thing is 3D is far more feasible for like a long plan series sort of yeah. thing. Mm. But when you're just doing a short film, it's like, you know, it's like you can, it's like, because I mean, like in 3D, you kind of have the thing of like, uh, like what I talked about with the, the epilogue and the Clone Wars is like, you put a lot of time and effort into creating these assets that you're then going to want to reuse later on. Mm, yeah. And whereas in 2D, it's like you literally are recreating, you're, re you're making a new asset for every single frame, essentially. So you can afford to like it, like in the long term that's a lot more work because you can't just like make a lot of stuff at the start and then use that for the rest of it in the short term it's much better because yeah. you don't have mm -hmm. to like you know it does it's not a waste then of like okay we've created all these th awesome 3d assets to use now we're just they're just files sitting there not ready to be used but perfectly ready to be rigged or animated for something else if you wanted but um yeah i'd say i reckon there'll be like a, a mix of 2d and 3d and hopefully like a bunch of different styles of 2d as well it like depends what we'll mm. see yeah but it's like just like because i mean um because it, it's kind of don't really know yet if it's going to be like just different directors or if it's going to be like probably different animation teams for each one mm. i would hope that it's like that because then you get to go even yeah, more creative yeah. of like mm, having yeah. each be distinct and like each be their own story yeah, a of different like just, story yeah yeah and it's kind of it's, it's easier for the directors as well of like saying okay yeah just work with your team and do this yeah. this other director work with their team and you know. then they can all be making their different ones at the same time. Yes, exactly. You know? They can make them all back to back, put as much effort as they want into yeah, them. Exactly. And like, yeah, someone might have like a turnaround of like a month in making one of them. Someone might take over a year in making theirs, but it doesn't matter because it's just like have make them all together, release them all at the same time as part of the series. Mm. Yeah. And then like, yeah, that I'm really, really intrigued to see. Uh, Taika Waititi's yeah. Star Wars movie, yes. which we uh, we know nothing about. Uh, except that it's was it was first announced in May. It's already been in development. It's like he's writing it, and there was just more he's confirmation. Been, he's been writing the screenplay through the year, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, there's just more confirmation of it. Uh, and a release date. here. And a release date was it? Was it next? Was it? Yeah. When is it? Sometime. Uh, on this on this particular page that we're looking at, it hasn't said a release date. Yeah, I don't see it either. I don't think they have. Let me Are just they... go to oh, no, Taika's... They said really safe for the other one they didn't for this one. Yeah, for the Rogue Squadron movie, that's yeah, in 2023. Yeah, we got we got nothing on the, mm -hmm. the we got nothing on the Taika one yet. Yeah, that, uh, um, no title, no nothing. Oh. I I'm excited for that. Sounds interesting. They all we know is literally someone said it's gonna be like a a new, fresh, and fun take on Star Wars. So very much sounds like his sort of movie. He's gonna tell his sort of story in Star yeah. Wars universe, which sounds like you know I'm I'm down for that. Um. Think, um I would um uh, what's the word? I um I'm honestly expecting and like a bunch of people will pro well uh, if like I if I were, like just like went out and said this on Twitter there's like a bunch of people would go no it's going to be something more in the vein of Thor Ragnarok but I'm honestly expecting something a little more 
I'm also expecting like a kind of like pretty deep and emotional sort of story. Yeah. Because like that's something that he's like as much as comedy and like sort of and zaniness is Taika's forte. Like sort of like really really deep like um happy sad storytelling as they call yeah. it. That's like majorly his forte. That's what he really oh, excels completely. at. I would really like to. It's like as much as I adore Thor Ragnarok, given the choice between. Uh, like this like wild bombastic star wars story mm. and getting to see taika just t- tell this really poignant emotional star wars story yeah, yeah. i would want to see that because that's something we haven't really seen in star wars before. yeah whereas yeah. bombastic and wild was like we get that all the time in star wars but like what he could really really contribute of like making something unique and making something interesting out of it would be something like that <laughs> june 2017 we go and see wonder woman at the cinema it's brilliant it's a really really awesome movie I remember one of the first things I said upon leaving the cinema is Patty Jenkins needs to do a Star Wars movie. She would absolutely, she absolutely <laughs> nail the feel of it and like the sort of like this sort of the emotions, the action is like everything that I saw in Wonder Woman made me think, yeah, this is like, yeah, she needs to do a Star Wars movie at some yeah. point. Yeah. And here we are with Rogue Squadron <laughs> releasing Christmas Day 2023. And then I watched her announcement video about it. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that. Do we, we... Do we want to... I can throw uh, it up. I didn't yep. watch it. I just saw it. And I think yeah. that's the one... Did, is that the one I shared with you guys? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, you shared it. Yeah, you shared it. it. Yeah. Let's, I can throw I it up. I didn't watch it. Um, I just shared it because that was oh, in the middle just, of the yeah. award. Let's put it on because it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like... It introduces like a whole other thing I completely didn't realize about the yeah. film and like Ooh. what makes me really excited for it. I love to move fast and speed of any kind. I think that that's because I grew up the daughter of a great fighter pilot, and every day I would wake up and go outside and look up, see my father and his squadron taking off and their F-4s roaring across the sky, and it was the most thrilling thing still I've experienced in my entire life. So when he lost his life in service to this country, I, it ignited a desire to, in me to turn all of that tragedy and thrill into one day making the greatest fighter pilot movie of all time. But try as I might and look as I did, I couldn't find the right story ever. I kept looking and looking, but I just couldn't find the right one until now. Now I found a movie about two things I love. So I'm gonna see you very soon. I didn't watch it. Thank God I didn't watch it. Before. Yeah, that's just an extra level to it that I completely oh, yeah. wasn't expecting. Yeah. You I know? also realized, yeah, I, I'm thinking, I was thinking, oh yeah, that was quite a bit of plain stuff in, in Wonder Woman, wasn't there? And then I no, yeah. got Yeah, when, and then... when, when, when Rogue One, sorry, when Rogue One was first announced, everyone was expecting it was going to be a movie about Rogue Squadron. Yeah. And ah. then we instead had set up that Rogue One is actually the separate entity that then got the plans and everything and then it's set up in a comic that luke named his personal squadron made up of all the survivors of the death star attack for a new hope he named them after rogue one and named it rogue squadron ah, okay. so that is about this movie is about luke's personal squadron Ooh. um no idea if luke would be in it though sebastian stan could be sebastian in it you know stan. yeah so you know we'll see <laughs> but then it's yeah so um because i was like i was just thinking of it of like oh yeah cool so we got this like this cool premise from star wars first of all it's like one of the uh, it's like a bit of legends recanonization i guess because they're like a major thing in legends there was a video game there's a comic series uh, a bunch oh of it's novels. it's worth mentioning they appeared uh there were the the squadron of luke that were taking down the walkers on hoth yeah, yeah. oh was, yeah they, yeah so so yeah it's like seeing rogue squadron come back at some point we thought okay that's cool and it's like i i assume that like the way that they'd gone is like okay so we've got this project we want to do a rogue squadron movie <laughs> reach out, find a director for it, they find Patty Jenkins, so, you know, Rising Star, she's done Wonder Woman, Wonder mm. Woman 84, it's like becoming pretty well known, um, she's got a Cleopatra movie coming up. Yeah, mm. that's coming and too. Then, and they think, alright, yeah, let's get, let's get, or it was more a situation of, let's get Patty to do a Star Wars movie, and then they find, okay, so we've had a pitch for this, yeah, do that. But then seeing, like, that, okay, it's beyond just a passion project for her, this is like a, a personal project of, like, you yeah. know, wanting to, like, 
tell this story it was like you know and like just thinking about like the emotional context that's going to mm. have for her mm. in telling the story as well depending on like i wonder will they touch upon the links to rogue one and yeah. the idea of like this sort of squadron living in the legacy of someone of of these people that died to that they wouldn't be here if not for them mm. i i hope so because i don't know i got i won't lie i got emotional watching that little trailer of her talking yeah. about that and i just <laughs> I could just feel, feel it like you can yeah. feel it when she's talking about it so mm-hmm. like and even with rogue one i remember just feeling that heavy emotion when watching that yeah. film like that yeah. whole context of it you know what's going to happen and then you just mm-hmm. feel it like that's all you need to yeah. do when you're watching a film you feel it and the fact that we felt that during the freaking teaser <laughs> yeah i yeah. think it's i think she's the video of her rollerblading through an <laughs> exactly. airport and it's like and i it's think like, that's really touching and sweet exactly. and yeah. so i think <laughs> like, okay, i think especially yeah. just from the passion from her and just the emotional context for her and the emotional context of star wars i think it's gonna do i think yeah. it'll be okay the, the, of like you know just like setting out to make an amazing like an amazing like sort of top gun-esque film not of like just as not as like a not because she was paid to not because it's star wars and she's a fan of star wars not because she's a director and wants to make this amazing film all of that too yeah. but also but just because she's setting out to make this as a tribute to her family yeah you know? yeah and like just thinking like seeing like okay that's something that like you there's very rarely will you honestly see a film like that really yeah of like seeing a film that's like has like because there's there's passion projects and then there's passion projects and like yeah. seeing like and like just a star wars film like that as well it's like you know th- i like this is like probably like i am easily like hopping to like one of my most an- anticipated films yeah i think i'm anticipating um, it now especially yeah. also because i think it's not talked enough about in the movies and stuff like there are people behind those like pilots mm. their families there are people who yeah. love them they're mm. friends etc so the fact that she's told us you know like that her father lost his life in the force mm. and you know th- that just connected me to star wars straight away because i was like oh shit there's pilots yeah. in those seats saving lives because I, 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 so, I, I was reading about her afterwards because like, i didn't know about any of mm, about that but i was just no like idea. looking at a wikipedia page and i saw how yeah um her father was a vietnam veteran oh and my god I think he he died when she was seven when he <sighs> was 31 only Damn. and i thought like yeah i feel like um like because you think about like luke in a new hope he's sort of like he's already like lost his family he's lost his aunt uncle he's like he doesn't really have anything to go back to mm. when we see him going into like sort of like fighting and like you know hopping in an x-wing and going to destroy the death star yeah in rogue one everybody is kind of like they're all kind of outsiders they're all kind of loners they only they only really have each other and their cause I think that this is a film that's going to like really sort of touch upon like the idea of like like when you're going out and fighting for a cause but you've got people to come back to and you don't they don't know if you'll come back to them exactly sort of thing. I think probably the thing i'm most excited for on the star wars side well no, there's one thing i'm more excited for but that's we're not talking about that in this video yeah, <laughs> yeah. um but this is one I'm particularly right. excited for they call themselves the bad batch Clarinet animation. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> a really good clarinet. Yeah, that's so good. Cool. Better than it. Ready? The Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire. <laughs> Quite an impressive display. <laughs> Oof. That, t- that oh, title card. I have tears in my eyes. God damn. Yeah. That oh, just. I'm crying. I've got just, my scar on. Jesus. That that title card of just the Clone Wars still just Oof. burning. Yeah. Burning away to reveal the Bad Batch. Now, straight up, let me just head to the scene. And dude, that. Yeah, that one scene where it's just, yeah, them versus Vi- the clones. 
the fact that the, the fact that we have the scene of Palpatine. Hang on. Well, How fate, good does that look? Is just a shot. Look at like, it. Just a, like one oh. perfect shot. It's like so really yeah. now. Beautiful. The yeah. fact that we have this scene, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be the first episode, tells me Bad Batch is going to start the day after season seven. Yeah. Oof. Because season seven had the order falling, everything happened there. The ship crashed, Soka and Rex got away. That's what, well, it didn't end there. We had the flash forward, but you know, that's yeah. where it ended mostly, right? The, the order fell at like nighttime on Coruscant. And then the next more next day at like midday, Palpatine gave his speech. This is the next day. The order, the order fell last night, and oh. presumably, the 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 Bad Batch is gonna like see that s- stuff is going crazy around the galaxy. Like what's going on? The Jedi being killed, and they're gonna go to Kamino. And I'm pretty sure of what it looked like. They go to Kamino. It looks wait that yeah that's Camino. It oh. looks it looks so menacing there too. Yeah. And they go there yeah. and just like from their reactions here, I bet they arrive. Oh, there's Echo as well. <gasps> and he's got he's got black armor now. Nice. Um, and I'm pretty sure it looks like they arrive on Camino, and it's there's like nobody there, like it's deserted, and then they head inside. Do you see a couple of shots here? Um, they head inside, so all still sort of deserted. Ooh, the training. And yeah, then the training you see here. None of these clones are looking at them. They're all just standing in formation. I think they're almost like in a trance sort of thing, ready to listen to Palpatine's message. They're all sort of in, they're like just walking around, like what's going on here. I think they're gonna find yeah. all the clones, all of them just standing here in formation. And that's where uh, later in the trailer, that's where Palpatine's giving his speech. Yeah. So yeah, obviously, yeah, because you. Were, I think we. I asked both of you briefly about what might happen if Order mm. Order sixty six happened, and then it would affect them. But obviously, it hasn't. So. Yeah. I'm oh. I'm pretty sure that yeah they've gone here because they've seen other stuff happening. Oh, there's Echo. Mm. The next oh, shot. That, that was Echo. Yeah, it's like that. that, yeah. that was like he's got like me, like... he's got almost like Tie Fighter pilot gear. Yeah. And his yeah, helmet he is yeah. oh his helmet's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, pilot. <laughs> and then we see at the end here with oh but dude I got chills. Tarkin, yeah. That I believe it's like they're back on Camino here. It seems like they're on Camino. Tarkin has been sent to Kamino to oversee like the transition of like the Kamino and stopping the production oh. of the clones, that sort of thing. And presumably, I think what's happening here, and we see the scene in the cafeteria here of them like fighting the clones. I assume what's happening here is like they're they're called back to Kamino or they go investigate Kamino, and basically they're going to be reconditioned to serve the Empire, and they don't want oh. to do that. And yeah, they go so against then them. They try to break out, yeah. Yeah, because right before the shot of like when we hear Palpatine saying the Republic will be reorganized the first Galactic Empire, we see the shot of like the clones ready to shoot them. Yeah. Because like oh they're under God. arrest. And this is like it's this is exactly what I thought it was going to be. And I'm so obviously it's like it, this is about the transition of the Republic into the Empire and the clones, they're not clones anymore, they're stormtroopers now. Yeah. Basically, oh, you know. Oh my God. And uh, even just, even just the simple thing of like having them all be like that, we only ever really see them in like all the, the pure white of like yeah yeah because like and, we've gotten used to like in Clone Wars seeing them all of like the different customizations yeah, yeah the different like, no, colors no, no, on the yeah, helmets and stuff like, but now it's just yeah, clean they're just part and, of the machine oh and we're gonna we gotta talk about this real quick blink and you'll miss it who's that look like um go to the latest shot miss I like she's like I I. I, I don't know, she looks recognizable, but I don't... Think Commando. Is that? No. It, it's Fennec. <gasps> so oh she's... my god, wait, yeah, because that's a helmet! Yeah. yeah. So Fennec is gonna turn up, and like we'll see her as like a bounty hunter earlier in her career. <gasps> shortly after the Clone Wars ended. So that's a cool little touch. So obviously Ming Na Wen's gonna voice her. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Naturally. Yeah. More um, blood. <laughs> now, I want to talk about these guys right here, right before this shot of her, I believe. Oh yeah, there's um. Now. Yeah. Ooh. I believe what we're seeing here is the beginning of the Death Trooper program. Ah. Okay, like, see, okay. they've got they've got the darker armor and then the green mm. lenses. Like, well, yeah, because like... I was about to say before, was it the Dark Trooper? I was like, no, Dark yeah. Troopers have. And red. specifically, this guy's chest piece and his front of his mask here is very much like the Death Trooper helmets. Yeah. So I think this is like, they've, these guys have just like, upra- these guys have just got like, their armor's just been modified and their blasters got like scopes on them, which the, yeah. the, the, the clone trooper blasters never had. We're going to see the, the Republic and the clones going into the, the Imperial stuff. 
Yeah. So I think these guys' armor and their gears have been modified to be like more and sort of going to the death trooper thing. Mm. This guy's got probably his armor is custom made. It's going fully mm. into his helmet. Actually, looks a lot like Echo, um what Echo's helmet looked like. Yeah. In end of before, like we had the white and blue, and then when he's in the bad batch, now he's got mm. a different gear. So maybe it's reverse engineered off that. Mm. But that looks like very much like death trooper thing. And I have a theory as to who this guy is. Really? Because I think fig- I figure for it to be impactful. He's either got to be like a human and he's the first like human clone trooper and then going to stormtroopers. That could be interesting. Mm. But I think it'd be more impactful to be someone he's someone we know. Yeah. Uh, and this, this one's coming out March, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's out really, really yeah. soon. We've got a uh, busy start of the year. I know we do. So <laughs> we have, uh, this guy's identity. Not complaining right? though. Yeah, yeah. Now, <laughs> looking, if you, at if you look yeah. at less the top of the helmet, more mm-hmm. like you're looking at like just the this bottom half here, it does that looks that's like 100 like a death trooper. I said he's either got to be human and he's the first to like human clone trooper storm trooper thing that'd be interesting, or I think it'll be more impactful. He's someone we know, right? Yeah. I think that would be kind of cool. And just like this is no nothing the base up apart from maybe like that he's got that thing. Mm. Can you see my cursor, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, so cool. But I did, I did theorize, and I thought it'd be very emotionally impactful and be very cool. This guy's kind of the big bad of the season. Like, he's the guy sort of chasing down Bad Batch. And, you know, it'll be Dee Bradley Baker voicing him, so you'll just hear a clone trooper's voice. You won't be sure yeah. who he is. And he takes off the helmet, and it's Cody. <gasps> no! And my theory then, that could lead into the Obi-Wan series, Cody is the first Death Trooper. No! <laughs> Don't do that to me. Because the reason that occurred to me is I thought, well, uh, there's rumors that Cody was going to turn up in the everyone's series. And I thought, if you turned he? up, that, apparently, there was rumors, the same rumors that said Hayden was going to turn up. Yeah. Uh, as so, Vader. Yeah, tomorrow was going to be Cody in it. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. which I would like because, you know, Cody and Obi Wan, after Avengers, they have unfinished business that mm. he just, yeah. you know. Um, but my theory here was I thought, it, it just didn't occur to me as I started theorizing about this. I thought that, well, if Cody turned up in the other series, like, would he just be a stormtrooper? That'd be kind of boring for him to just yeah. be a stormtrooper. I thought it'd be really badass if yeah, Cody, like, one of the first to fall in line, one of the best soldiers of following orders, yeah. he's the first death trooper. Uh... And if he turns up in the Obi Wan series, he's like wearing this state of the art death trooper armor that Ooh. looks like stands out from the others. But. Because that's the thought, because if he's a clone, then you'll just hear his voice and you won't know who he is and he'll have a moment like when yeah. the helmet comes off and Echo would recognize him. The helmet comes off and he's got yeah. the scar across his face and it's, yeah. that's Cody. I was thinking, I thought, depending on like how dark they wanted to go with it. I hope they do. <laughs> could you like basically like take a still kind of living corpse and basically like throw him up cybernetic enhancements in there cybernetic brain and just oh and no we've got no and then we've got echo here oh no so... you think it's fives yeah no oh no that would be oh no, that would that be would... torture that would be that would be yeah. that would i mean be i would horrible. be surprised if dave did that yeah oh he's horrible that would, that would be brutal <laughs> nah yeah. dave's the best but at the same time yeah. i hate you dave <laughs> that would be everything brutal. you put us through <laughs> the, the 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 options in my head are now you mentioned that fives cody or wolf <gasps> wolf because oh, wolf has yeah. to at some points Actually, get like yeah. taken away from the program oh, of the yeah, empire it might be. Could it be so wolf? that's a good point no, it could yeah. be it's possible well, I mean, like, he's, no, got no, a, he's got a he's got a he's got a dc's like... uh 17 sidearm which both wolf and cody carried what if these and wolf had the um wolf had like the thin visor like that as well didn't he he did and, actually uh, didn't he have oh so it the... might be wolf it might did be wolf antenna i oh well that's know. cool because we know he's we know he's fine then afterwards i can't, oh. remember, I can't remember if he had the antenna but i remember, remember he had the the uh, visor like you still see my screen if i go over here yeah you can see it you see this screen, or you can still see no. just the other screen. No, you one. have to share. Okay. You have to change it on the share screen. Oh, okay, thing. cool. Yep. Commander Wolf. It could be Wolf, actually. I could buy that. Mm. Oh, his helmet. I mean, his helmet if it was, Cody, was pretty different. I would be very emotional. Yeah. I I think Cody would be cool because it could lead into um. Obi Wan. It could lead yeah. into Obi Wan series. I I want to look <laughs> at. There's one shot up ahead that I particularly liked. This shot. I I, I always, oh. So I just want to say. Yeah, it's the biggest thing in like any of these, and like from like a not just a VFX perspective, just from a photography perspective, all of like the depth, the heavy depth of field shots. Yeah, like, yeah. Because depth of field is like kind of hard to do in 3D as well, and hard to do well. But like, or even see... in animation, it's oh so yeah, hard. that too. Yeah. yeah. But then like here, like seeing this, uh, like even like just the shot before of um uh, I forget the name of the sniper. 
Uh, uh, crosshair. Crosshair. Yeah. When there was that shot of crosshair, like shoot, film it, shooting over cover, it's like, and there's like this sort of like really, really shallow depth of field, like mm. it's like sh sh um, simulating like a shallow lens is like that just look really, really good. Yeah. And like here, it's like there's just like it's crisp. It, it's yeah, it's one of those things where like just like this sort of like it just adds so much more realism to it. It's like you look at it twice and sort of yeah, like, and even in this shot, it looks as if it's real. Yeah, yeah, it's obviously animation because yeah. it's stylized, but you look at it twice and, like, because it just has that feel of, like, this sort of, like, tangible reality to yeah. it because it looks like it was shot through an actual yeah. lens rather this... than just Oof, being simulated. Really good. This yeah. shot right here, I really like it. Because, one, it confirms the suspicion I had when you saw some of the architecture of one of the planets over. This is, uh, this is Pantora. The way we're going with the story and, like, how dark we're going, like, how scary it can be and everything. It's, like, what we're seeing here, it's, like, the Republic has won the war. They beat mm -hmm. the Separatists. They freed the galaxy in the Mind Spell. People here, as the as Republic soldiers are marching down the street, people are cheering and, like, applauding them. But then this image of, like, these aren't the clone troopers. This isn't the Republic. This is the Empire enforcing their yeah. protection. Yeah. And they don't know it yet. On the And yeah. that's just such a scary... Such a, thunderous applause. Yeah, such a yes. scary image right here of, like, that these are two clone troopers... But they don't look like clone These are imperial yeah, these are, like, yeah. so, soldiers. Like just the way that they've that they framed it, the way the they're framing posing them. Like, they look so tall. Perfect. Yeah, I they know. look so they menacing. Look, yeah, like, yeah, it's like yeah, just it's. I I always love that. Like how much like especially mm. like you see a lot in Mando too. Like how much you can like sort of depict emotion, just through framing of like someone with like just a fully static mask. You know, no mm. facial features or anything. But like these guys, is like yeah, you just take one look at them, and those are stormtroopers, not clone troopers. Clone wars, you check them like have the blast up or something like that, or by blast it down, so like, they're ready to fire yeah, a second's yeah. notice. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Like, ready to go. It's like on the yeah. go the at all times. Would... Yeah, and it's I. It's just like they're machines now. It yeah. sounds no like it, the the horrible idea that's like maybe a lot of the clones back in Kamino, the final batch of them were just like reconditioned to be very serving of yeah. orders. Yeah. And that they, none of them have any identifying marks or customization of the armor it's just plain pure white that's it yeah, yeah so there's like no personality either yeah it's so just they're just one body one mind yeah sort of vibe. yeah i'm really excited for this because i'm it's excited because everything... like we thought clone wars was dark because at yeah. times it was this like gonna... yeah. but this and, i this is going to be way more and, darker than clone and wars. we saw palpatine and i'm just gonna say about i know I, because they have an asset of him too that vader is gonna make a couple appearances oh yeah series, i think because, so because Without he's such a, a major major figure in the empire at this point. Yeah. Like either Vader it's gonna be, be like we'll see him in a couple of episodes, or at the very end we'll see like one not yeah. one, but maybe yeah. like one big moment of him. Even it's just if it's just a little moments I think would be like a cool shot or something. Like just like if Palpatine's giving a speech somewhere and you just see like him just standing beside Palpatine on Chorus and just standing yeah. there. Oh you know, like looking out at the crowd. <laughs> You know, now I want just... to talk about the Obi Wan show. Can we finish up this <laughs> yeah. and talk about yeah, Obi Wan? Yeah. <laughs> one last thing um, I wanted... Anyway, uh, we have gone completely off topic, yeah. <laughs> but, but and, and long we've over gone time, long over time, uh, yeah. about 24, 25 minutes over time. Who cares? But it's, it wow. it doesn't matter. But um, of course we're gonna go yeah, I, I, we, I guess we should probably wrap up here and then we can start on the Obi Wan specific. Yeah. Okay. So... Bye, guys. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. That's Bye. our Bye. reaction. Bye. Reaction. That's a re reaction, reaction. Review. Reaction review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and then you can have your suggestions in the next videos. And the link down in the description. Okay, he's like goodbye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>